The comic book landscape sure has changed over the years, especially on film. Aquaman! We live in a day and age where Aquaman, of all characters, became one of the most successful superhero movies of 2018. The movies themselves wouldn't be anything without the comics that inspired them. For as long as there have been comics, there have been erotic comics as well. Although never a mainstream genre, they have existed as a niche alongside them. Some of the earliest erotic comic books in North America were so-called Tijuana Bibles, which first appeared in the 1920s. They were typically eight-page black-and-white pamphlets featuring artwork that ranged from very good to very crude. The subject matter was usually the sexual adventures of well-known comics characters, political figures, and movie stars, produced without the permission, of course. Sent you this? Sure, they're very valuable, like antiques. Mother, this is gross. I think it's kind of flattering. They were sold under the counter in places such as tobacco stores and burlesque houses. Millions of Tijuana Bibles were sold at the height of their popularity in the 1930s. However, they went into a steep decline after World War II, and by the mid-1950s, only a small portion of new products was still appearing on the market. Tijuana Bibles still exist to this day, but just like the comic book medium that inspired it, has changed and evolved over the years to what we are familiar with to this day. They are a lot more accessible than ever before. Thanks to the internet, erotic comics have exploded to its own subgenre online. You could find pretty much anything your perverted hearts desire. Yes, you guessed it, even fetish comics. Now that the history lesson is out of the way, the reason as to why I bring all this up is because today's video will be about expansion fan comics. For those of you who are unaware, Expansion Fan Comics is a subscription-based body expansion themed website dedicated to comics that feature breast, butt, and all things body expansion. I've been a member of the site for a little over a year, and I've been meaning to do a video on this topic for quite a while now. This review will be both a brief overview of the types of comics you'll find and the service they provide. So without further ado, I'm the Rogue Inflator. Strap on your cape and grab your shark repellent. Let's dive in. Expansion Fan Comics is just one of many fetish-themed comic book subscription services that are under the same banner as Interweb Comics, each that require their own separate subscription. Expansion Fan Comics was first founded in 2013 as a collaborative effort between artists and writers aiming to create the best possible body expansion comics out in the market. This, however, wasn't the first comic service that provided body expansion related comics. As some of you older fans might remember, Expansion Comics and Breast Expansion Story Club were providing a similar subscription services as Expansion Fan Comics, but to a lesser success. Expansion Fan Comics does heavily focus on the notion that this is a comic service for fans, by fans, and it does certainly show, once you become a member, you'll have full access to their library of comics and have a chance to commission their artists. But we'll get to that later. Although Expansion Fan Comics does feature various different forms of body expansions, you'll soon come to discover that their main focus tends to be solely on breast expansion. Now, that is not a bad thing by all means, but I just wish that they had a bit more variety. Seeing as they are called Expansion Fan Comics, not Breast Expansion Fan Comics. Yes, I know, I'm guilty of doing this as well on my own channel. On the bright side, Expansion Fan Comics have switched things up recently and done more weight gain and inflation-themed comics. 
Each comic book is usually 15 pages long, with the addition of the cover and four preview pages for the upcoming comics. One of the main criticisms people like to point out is how there just isn't enough body expansion, as the plot takes out a large chunk of the comic. Once you get to the expansion-related segments, it's usually too late. A great example of this is Strike Force 5, a comic that relies too much on action and plot than the body expansion itself. Now, having a good plot is not bad, but seeing as this is a porn comic, the plot should just stay in the background and shouldn't overshadow the main thing people came to see. It only detracts the reader, who will most likely just skip all the dialogue bits in favor of just the expansion portions. I'm not saying everybody does this. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience and the opinions I came across online. Then again, it's good to have at least some kind of plot than nothing at all. Guess what, baby? I'm not even really a wolf. <laughs> Yeah, I'm <laughs> This was something Expansion Fan Comics experimented a few times with the comic Expansion Anthology and Balloon Girl Problems. Expansion Anthology is exactly what it sounds. The comic features five short, unrelated body expansion stories, each that are done by a different writer and artist. What I like about this comic is the way it's able to get right into the good stuff right away. There was hardly any padding or filler. The body expansion is done well, and the stories are just short enough to keep you interested. Balloon Girl Problems, on the other hand, is a completely different story. It follows a woman with the natural born ability to inflate herself like a balloon. She experiences four misadventures because of her unique condition. On paper, that sounds good, but once you actually read the comic, it's actually quite boring. There are hardly any dialogue balloons whatsoever. It just lacks any substance, and the plot, lack thereof, isn't strong enough to hold the comic together, even if the body inflation sequences are done well. Now, as a good example, I'd like to bring up a few books which I feel live up to the title of being called an expansion fan comic. I'll try to quickly sum up the story in each comic and explain why you should check them out. The Cleavage Crusader Might as well get the obvious out of the way first. When you think about expansion fan comics, I wouldn't be surprised if this character is the first thing that pops into your mind. She had become somewhat of a poster girl for the site, and rightfully so. She's a superhero with body expansion related powers, and yes, it's just as awesome as it sounds. Our story follows a geek named Sam, who dreams of becoming a superhero. Her friend shuts her off saying how it would be impossible, as most superheroes gain their powers by lab accidents. So one night, Sam sneaks into a lab, carrying space rocks, an unknown green substance, and mystical amulets, of all things, in hopes of gaining superpowers. And no, it's never explained how she got her hands on those objects. The security in this place must really suck if an 18-year-old girl can just walk her way in without anyone noticing. Sam drops all her stuff in a chemical vat and hopes for the best. The vat explodes, sending her flying through the roof. She wakes up in a field, uncertain whether or not her plan actually worked. She would soon come to find out, as a truck was heading her way and about to hit her. Sam's powers activate, expanding her boobs so large that the truck crashes into them. Now that Sam has superpowers, she is overjoyed, but uncertain how they actually work. She noticed how her breasts grew out of instinct and excitement as the truck was about to hit her, so she begins to experiment by playing with herself. As she expected, this triggered her growth. We then cut to a few days later when a dastardly villain by the name of Razorback breaks into a bank with a tank. Sam interferes, now donning her superhero persona, the Cleavage Crusader, 
She activates her new powers and cracks jokes all the while taking down Razorback's useless henchmen. This doesn't sit well with him as he doesn't want to be made an ass. The Cleavage Crusader follows up on his comment and uses her powers expanding her ass to humongous proportions, knocking him out. The issue ends with the Cleavage Crusader teaming up with the superhero she had looked up to. The first issue is well structured and it does get the point across, as well as demonstrating Sam's body expansion powers. The plot does move relatively quick, which is both an advantage and a disadvantage. I liked how it got straight to the point and didn't linger on too long in parts where it didn't need to. However, there were some small plot details I wished they could have explained more. Seeing as they had 15 pages to work with, I understand if some corners needed to be cut in order to progress the plot. The Cleavage Crusader as a character is enjoyable, but nothing we haven't seen before. However, her powers are truly what make her stand out. I like how the writer is able to use fun and creative ways for her to use her powers. A personal favorite of mine is from issue 2, where in order to save people from a tall burning building, the Cleavage Crusader expands her assets to work as a soft pillow, allowing the people to jump down. She then uses her breast milk to put out the fire. It's small moments like those that really stand out and make the series so enjoyable. In each issue, the Cleavage Crusader usually faces off with the new villain of the week, only for her or the villain to get expanded in some sort of way. The whole comic is reminiscent of an old Saturday morning cartoon, but with adult themes and elements thrown in the mix. The body expansion is done very well, and the way it's presented and the plot feels natural to the world they have created. The comics can get plot heavy at times, but not to the extent where it feels like it has overstayed its welcome. And because of these aspects, it has proven to be one of the most, if not the most popular comic on the site. Thus far, there have been eight issues, making it the longest running comic on expansion fan comics. If you like traditional superhero stories and old Saturday morning cartoons, then be sure to give this comic a read. Next up is another superhero related story, but this time from the opposite perspective. The Depravity of Dr. D. Light The story follows an anarchic supervillain by the name of Dr. D. Light who likes to cause havoc by inflating people. She enjoys being the center of attention, even going as far to inflate a news editor just because her crimes didn't make headlines. However, she wasn't always like this, as revealed in issue 5. Dr. D was a shy and quiet college student who tried her best not to get notice. She had a keen sexual fascination with inflation, which led her to develop a formula that when applied to latex would allow it to enhance its flexibility. She tried to create the world's first unpoppable balloon, but in doing so, made her body capable of inflating beyond that which was humanly possible. Dr. D. Light then began to use her skills for crimes and for her own delight. But it wouldn't last for long, as a superhero by the name of Tracer, sorry, I mean Elastic Lass, was stealing her spotlight. At first, Dr. Light just wanted her out of the picture, but instead, she had found herself an equal nemesis. For her, this grew to be an obsession. She dedicated her time for coming up with new schemes of taking down her enemy and just waiting in anticipation for the day the two would clash again. The comic series has exactly what you'd want and expect in a comic book that is solely focused on body inflation. Not only is it perfectly paced and balanced when it comes to both plot and expansion, 
It has a fascinating main character, and to top it all off, there's a lot of body inflation, and it's done extremely well. What I like most about this comic is the way the body inflation is presented. There is hardly a panel or page where body inflation isn't visible in some way. Much of that would have to do with the fact that they use sex position, by which referring to the use of sexual scenes to deliver information to the reader about the backstory and character motivations. But only with body inflation. All in all, I highly recommend giving this comic series a read. It's one of the best body inflation themed comics the site has to offer. Last but not least, we have God Among Women. I'll be lying if I didn't say that part of the reason I wanted to do this video was just so I could review this comic. The best way I can sum this up is, it's Death Note, but only with breast expansion. We are introduced to our protagonist, Chris, who is rocking that radical 90s hairdo. He works as a waiter at a fine restaurant while at college, but one day his fate would be changed forever when a magical notebook falls from the ceiling and bumps his head. Wow, they're not being subtle about this at all. By this point, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Ryuk were to pop up and steal an apple. I'm sorry, I'll try to keep the Death Note comparisons to a minimum, but if they keep coming up like this, then I'm not sure if I can contain myself. At first, Chris doesn't realize the notebook he is using is magical, but when he writes his co-worker Heather's name and the section she is working at, things start to get weird. Heather's bus size suddenly grows from a C cup to an E cup right in front of his eyes. Heather, however, is completely oblivious to her changes. As it turns out, when you write a woman's name in the notebook, it tells the woman's breast size and how to alter it. Realizing now what he could do and get away with it, Chris begins to experiment on Josephine, the restaurant's foul-mouthed cook. After digging deeper into her past, Chris discovers that she used to have giant J-cup tits, but had to get them reduced as they were getting in the way of her gymnastics. Just like with Heather, Josephine's breasts begin to magically expand to the size Chris had written in the notebook. He also noticed a slight change in her personality as well. Things start to get even more out of control when the restaurant opens. Having now transformed both Heather and Josephine, he begins to experiment on the occupants in the restaurant. Chris walks up to a hot blonde haired woman named Penelope, ready to take her order. He tries to write her name down and her bus size, but the notebook doesn't work as she has breast implants. Chris is slightly disappointed but decides to experiment on the world around her and see if she notices the changes taking place. Chris tries to expand the breasts of the news anchor on the TV, but that fails as the notebook can only work at close range. He then turns Penelope's attention outside the restaurant to a woman in a pink dress, giving her the biggest breasts he has given thus far. Penelope was none the wiser and didn't notice any of the changes that happened to Ruby. Chris was taken back at the sheer power he now holds in his hands. He begins to fantasize about limitless possibilities he can use the notebook for, perhaps even rule the world, or become a self-appointed god among women. <laughs> Death Note comparisons aside, this is still an interesting concept, and it is executed well. Out of all the comics I have presented thus far, this is the most plot and dialogue heavy with minimal breast expansion. But if you are willing to look past that, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, especially if you like Death Note. I like how in this issue they lay some of the ground rules on how the notebook works and what it can do. The breast expansion was well done, even though there wasn't much nudity in this issue. I also like how it's hinted that some of the female staff know more about the notebook than they are letting on, which could cause Chris some trouble down the road. I like where the series is at and I would love to see more, 
So far, there have been two issues. The second issue is about the same as the first, but Chris discovers that the notebook can make women fat as well. If they do borrow more from Death Note, I would like to see someone else using the notebook and the effects it may cause. Or an L-type character investigating the sudden breast growth among women. By the way, are you going to eat that piece of cake? Cake makes you fat. I'm not going to eat any. Actually, I found that you don't gain any weight as long as you burn calories by using your brain. <laughs> there were just some of my personal favorite comics from the site. There were just so many to choose from that I couldn't possibly fit them all in one video without making it two hours long. I hope I was able to bring some of these comics to your attention, and if you would like me to review some more comics from the site, please let me know down in the comments. I might make this a new series on my channel. Having now gone over every comic on the site, I'm glad to say that the quality is consistent. You can clearly tell how much care and detail was placed on every issue, each with their own unique style and design to help differentiate the type of tone you'd find in the comic. However, I started to notice a certain trend. About 35% of the comics featured on the site tend to leave on cliffhangers, which are never resolved with the following issues. This can be especially annoying if you find a certain series you like, and there is no conclusion, so just bear that in mind when you're going in. Downloading comics on the site is easy. You can either download them as a zip file or as a PDF. There is also the option of doing it manually as you are reading the comic from the browser. The site is also mobile compatible. You can read comics on the fly whenever you want. Although, if you are reading them straight from the phone's browser, it does tend to occasionally freeze up, at least on the phone I'm using. However, if you download the comic as a zip file or a PDF file on your phone, it's recommended that you download the Comic Rack app or a similar file manager related app to view the comic better. Having tried this alternative myself, I'm happy to say that it works. Alright, let's move on. Now let's talk about the commissioning process. As you could tell from the art styles, these illustrations are done by the same artists who do the comics on the site. You can't simply commission the artist whenever you want. In order to submit your commission, you'll have to fill out a form. The way you can get a commission is by collecting weekly tokens. Each week, you can gain a new token. The more tokens you have, the better chance you have of winning. You can submit your idea at any time during the course of the week. Even if you lose, you don't lose any of the tokens you gained thus far. Once you actually do win, you'll get an email notifying you that you won. Your submission, however, will still have to be approved by the moderator of the site. You would expect that they would get your submission approved rather quickly after you won, but no, it can take up to two or three weeks for your submission to get approved. Once your submission does get finally approved, you'll be notified that it's being worked on. The wait, however, still continues. The time it takes for them to actually finish your commission could take up to 10 weeks. Yes, you heard me right. 10 fucking weeks. This is understandable as these artists have their hands full with not just only comics on expansion fan comics, but other fetish themed comics on interweb comics as well. On the bright side, once the commission is finished, you'll have enough tokens to submit your next idea and have a better chance of winning again. The wait is worth it at the end. These illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. The artists do an amazing job transforming your idea into an awesome work of art. What I also like about this is that there isn't a per se limit as to how many characters you can include with each illustration but the highest I've seen thus far has been 13 characters. Which is great as normally when you are commissioning an artist, the price for additional characters can be quite pricey. So in that sense, if you have a larger commission in mind, you might as well use it here. All in all, I've been quite satisfied with the artwork I've been able to get commissioned. However, you must bear in mind that you can't sadly choose as to who does your artwork. This can be especially disappointing if you were hoping to commission a specific artist on the site. 
Usually the artist they sign to do your commission is just the right person to bring your idea to life. While doing research for this video, I wanted to try out all the features. That also meant finding out what it took to get your own comic made. Surprisingly enough, you don't have to be a member of the site to submit your own comic script. All you have to do is send them an email. I'm rather passionate when it comes to comics and superheroes. Some could say I might have an unhealthy obsession. If you couldn't already tell, I have read comic books my whole life. I love the medium and everything it has to offer. I've also taken time studying comics and how they are made and written. So, as you could imagine, the thought of writing your own comic book has crossed my mind once or twice. I've written some smaller body expansion related comics over the years, but not to the same level and degree as to what expansion fan comics were offering. They were, in fact, an actual comic book publisher, so that was a big deal at least to me. So I jumped at the opportunity. I sent them an email, and a week later on March 11th, 2018, I got a reply from the expansion fan comic senior editor. He was nice and provided a breakdown of all the necessary steps to required to get a comic script approved. Step 1 was to go over comic pitches and ideas I had to offer. He would then decide what ideas sounded interesting and could be turned into a comic. I presented to him with a few of my ideas. One pitch particularly caught his interest. A female butt expansion related story, set in a dystopian cyberpunk future, where a down on her luck wrestler, by the name of Juliet, is given a chance to take down her opponent by the means of a highly experimental body enhancing drug. Things don't quite work out the way she imagined. Instead of granting her huge muscles, it made her ass gigantic instead. Now Juliet would have to gain control over her new power and face her opponent all the while struggling not to fall on her ass. He loved the idea and moved me to step two, doing a simple page breakdown. This required me of breaking my idea down page by page. It was a lot more difficult than I had originally thought, seeing as each page you have four to six panels to play with and only 15 pages to tell your story. Luckily, I had written comic scripts before, so I was able to figure out what story beats and elements were required in each panel and page to keep the story flowing naturally. After my breakdown was approved, the moved me to step three, the script writing process. In the email, he also sent two documents, one which was a script guide and the other a contract. I felt so happy that I was getting closer and closer to getting my very first comic published. Oh, if I only knew what would happen next. Once I submitted my own script, he gave me some constructive criticism on how to improve it, which I took to heart and made the necessary changes that needed to be made. However, here is where the story sadly ends. I didn't hear back from him. I tried contacting him again, but he just didn't answer any of my emails. At this point, I just gave up. As you could imagine, I was pretty butthurt. But just like all wounds, they heal over time. I still want to try and tell this story in some way, perhaps using Daz. Who knows, I might become the next sucker mouth. I don't need your goddamn permission, you goddamn motherfucker! I fucking hate you! Is it worth $25 a month? Nope. If you're planning on staying for one month and download all the comics, and commission one artwork, in that case, $25 isn't that bad. But if you're planning to stay longer, that's when the price starts to hurt. Although you can choose as to how you set up your subscription, that could save you some money down the road, if you pick the 3 month or 12 month subscription. Regardless, it's still quite expensive, no matter what option you pick. Once you read all the comics, there isn't much of a reason to stay. Yes, you will be able to get the newest comics that come out that month and commission their artist. But you only get two new comics a month, and commissioning their artists can take forever. If they lower their price down to $10 or $15 a month, then it wouldn't be that bad. 
I just wish they had a little bit more to offer. Like a form, for instance. Say what you will about Banana Galactic, but they at least had an inbuilt community where people can come and talk freely what they liked and disliked about the site. Now this just may be me, but how cool would it be to give members and non-members of the site the ability to buy physical printed versions of their comics? As a comic collector myself, I actually wouldn't mind paying a bit extra just to physically own one of these comics. All in all, the comics in Expansion Fan Comics are great, but their service could use some improving. I think I'll just ride the high seas and find these comics elsewhere if you catch my drift. What are some of your thoughts on Expansion Fan Comics? Comment below and let me know. I would like to thank Swell Reads for providing this amazing voiceover for this video. They do amazing voiceovers for body expansion themed stories and comics. Everyone knew I was small chested, but now I mashed a hand on my chest assessing my size. I was way past triple D's at this point. Please. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel and support their Patreon. I would also like to thank Viola Zarao for doing these awesome 3D artworks for my comic that never was. She's an amazing 3D artist and animator. I especially love her Mass Effect themed work. I highly recommend checking out her DeviantArt page and YouTube channel, as well as supporting her on Patreon. As always, I'm Rogue Inflator, signing out. We'll start with oxygen therapy. You're blowing up! I feel funny! I'm not surprised. Careful what you wish for. You might get it. Figure is good, but Jumbo is dear. I'll give you boobs and come out to here. What the fuck? What's after blowing up? <laughs>